So I'm sitting here in the Mission Valley segment of San Diego, California, driving DoorDash on a $6.50 per delivery bonus. And I'm thinking to myself, how long should you have to wait for an order when you go online? If you're waiting longer than five minutes really, whenever you first go online, when you schedule a shift, and especially if you're sitting near a hot spot, something's wrong. It should be busy enough, especially if you're on a per delivery bonus. If there's a bonus DoorDash has deemed during this time in this segment of the marketplace, typically it's pretty busy. And that stood true today. I just went online uh, about two minutes later, got my first order. So let's go do pickup number one. So you're gonna find out that this shift was one of those shifts where I couldn't really check in because it was that busy. So I wanna walk through these orders with you to understand why I accepted what I accepted. So this first order here, I wanna go over positioning because again, I am starting in the Mission Valley segment of San Diego. That's kind of the central area here. Now this one is 4.2 miles, but note, it's kind of pulling me south into downtown. So look at the counter, there's actually four seconds left before I accepted this one because I was thinking hard, how is parking gonna be down there? And then of course I have to drive back to get in to Mission Valley. Now what you'll find, at least from what I see in my experience, is a lot of these orders will pull you out of your current marketplace. So I want you to think about those two things as a basis. Number one, how is the parking? So I can understand, am I gonna be able to make an easy pickup? And then number two, where is it? I noted here, this is kind of in the downtown area and it is four miles away. Am I okay if I'm gonna have to drive back without an order? Now here's the good thing. Number two, I'm actually headed back to the Mission Valley market segment. And I already got an order as I'm pulling into that market segment. This one's solid, $12.50 for 2.6 miles. Remember that dollars to mile ratio. How many dollars am I getting for the quoted miles I'm driving? This one is a no brainer. Now, when you get a stacked order like this, you may be already in the hustle and bustle of trying to pick up the first order. So I want you to look at this. This stacked order from Jamba Juice, look at the dollars first, right? $11.50. That's solid. Number two, look at those miles. This one's solid. It's just 3.5 miles for that pay. Now look where it's finishing, however. This is again pulling us back south into downtown. So that's the third thing to consider strategy. How do I feel about making that delivery in a busier area like downtown? But the dollars to mile ratio on this one is solid. Let's accept this one. Now this order from Buca de Pepo, I want you to understand a few things on this one. This one's a little tricky, and that's solely because there's longer miles on this one, 9.3 miles. But look at the cash flow, $19.16. And I want you to note one more thing on these orders. Now you may see most every order say this, or maybe not, let me know in the comments, but you can see right here at the bottom, total may be higher. In my experience, when you see this total may be higher, and it is higher, it's because of the tip. There's a higher tip that's not quite being shown, it's not being included here on this order request. So let's say the tip amount was $5, and that amount's included in this 1916, but in actuality, when you complete this order, the tip amount was closer to $10. So your pay would actually be higher than that $19, and that is the case here. Look at the payout. It was actually $26, $26.50 to be exact. And look at the customer tip, $14. So let me know down below in the comments, do you see a customer tip is actually quite high, higher than maybe expected when you see orders like that? Let's say it may be higher. This order, it comes down to smart positioning, finding dense areas so you really get rapid fire orders whenever you're in that marketplace. If this one, $14.50 for just 2.8 miles. But a problem on this one, when I got to this restaurant, it was closed. Now that's very frustrating. And there's prompts in the app to indicate that this restaurant is closed. But do you get paid or not because you're taking time to drive there? 
So we can see here, I took a picture of the front door. It's gonna ask you to verify that this restaurant is closed. And I was paid a partial amount, $9.25. If you remember, the quoted order was $14.50, but at least we got the nine at 25, and you, of course, you didn't do a pickup, you didn't do the delivery. But getting 9.25 just for driving there, obviously not doing a pickup or delivery, I don't think that's too bad. And I want you to let me know, do you encounter a lot of restaurants that are closed when you arrive? Because I can't say I have. There haven't been that many orders that I remember when you get there and the restaurant's actually closed. All right, so now let's get back home. We'll go over the numbers for a pretty impressive night. So this shift was from 5.15 p.m. until 8.45 p.m. And during that three and a half hours, I generated $119 in gross revenue or a gross revenue per hour of $34. In that three and a half hours, I completed nine deliveries, would have liked some more tips, only got six tips out of that with an average of $4.50 per tip. Business miles, pretty good here at 38. Now, if we take that 38 miles multiplied by our standard IRS business deduction, that gives us a tax deduction of $21.85. So again, it's knowing where the hotspots are, it's the positioning, it's taking advantage of the highest per delivery bonuses, it's knowing where it's busy, even if it's not a hotspot, led to a very strong shift tonight. And I've said before, I would sprinkle in some luck here as well. I mean, you're out there and you're kind of letting the algorithm do its thing, but best set yourself up for success by following those tips that I mentioned here. So I think this is one of my best performing shifts as of late. That's what, $34 in gross revenue per hour. So challenge to you, can you beat that? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you have a side hustle, that's kind of why you're here, make sure to check out the first link in my description. That's from my Amazon storefront, so you can get the very best accessories. And after you're done with that, make sure to click or tap the screen right now for my most recent video, as well as a video recommended for you, and I'll see you in the next one.